Good morning, Squim. It is Monday, November 1st already. Wow, cannot believe it's the 1st of November. We will be sending out our inclement weather information today. It will be posted on our website and it will also go out to all families through Skyward, all staff and families through Skyward. So we're getting ready for that colder weather. Um, also on Friday, there is no school for students because our staff will be in a professional learning day. They will be uh, learning about UDL. They will be uh, looking at our equity work and we will be um, utilizing Laurel Smiley with Dare to Lead. So a very fun filled, packed, um, enriching day. And on that note, I will send it over to Victoria Ballant, who is our Human Resources Director. Victoria. Thank you, Dr. Prime. Good morning or good afternoon, everyone. Wanted to let you know that we continue to say we need bus drivers and bus aides. So if you're interested in being a bus driver, we will train you and we will pay for the cost of um, your licensing. So if you uh, think that might sound like fun, I encourage you to go ahead and shoot on over to our website and hit the employment button and apply for bus driver. If you want to be a bus aide, that would be somebody who rides along in the buses to help with um, help with our students, help make sure they get to, to and from school safely. That's another need that we have. So hopefully there's some folks out there who are interested. It's a wonderful way to kind of give back to your community and also a great way to stay in sync if you have students to stay in sync with their school calendar. You work when they're in school and when they're out of school, you are not working. I've had many people say that they started driving a bus for that very reason and turns out that they love it. They love watching the kindergartners come on their first day of school and driving them until they're seniors on their last day. It's a very rewarding job. Highly encourage you to consider it and to apply. Thanks everyone, Dr. Prime. Thank you very much. And next we will have Darlene Applin, who is our Director of Finance and Operations. All right, thank you, Dr. Prime. I'm just gonna give a little update about nutrition services and a reminder since how we're in November and uh, we have student uh, conferences coming up and early release. So I just wanna remind families that Breakfast and lunch will be offered during conference days. Um, if you have a student in elementary school, we will be sending home a meal form with your uh, child and please fill it out and send it back with your student. Um, if you have students at the middle school or high school, we will have meals available for students to pick up on campus. So um, meal service will look a little bit different depending on the age of your um, student. So, um, get this filled out and, and let you breakfast will be set home. Thank you very much. And following up today, we have Sonia Bittner, our registered nurse for the Squim School District, who I'm sure has a plethora of information for us. Good morning. Thank you, Dr. Prine. So I don't often read directly from the paperwork produced by the Washington State Department of Health, but today I am. Uh, pediatric COVID vaccines are being authorized. And I want to read this directly so that families listening are getting the information that providers are getting as well, because I do know that uh, many families are looking forward to this vaccination. And of course, as with all things children related, we have our concerns. The Vaccines and Related Biological Products Advisory Committee, better known as VRBPAC, met earlier this week, or at the end of last week, to discuss Pfizer's request to allow for the administration of the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine for children five through 11. The committee reviewed the following points in their decision-making process. Children five to 11 years of age have accounted for approximately 9% of the COVID-19 cases in the United States. There are many serious side effects associated with COVID-19, such as myocarditis and multi-system inflammatory syndrome. Myocarditis and pericarditis have been a known side effect of the mRNA vaccines, and reported vaccine efficiency is as high as 90%. 
After review of the risks versus benefits, the committee voted to recommend approval of that vaccine. When they recommended approval, then the request went to the Food and Drug Administration, who on October the 26th also gave approval for the pediatric COVID vaccine. Now the request goes forward to the CDC and its Advisory Council on Immunization Practices. They are planning on meeting on November 2nd or 3rd to discuss the vaccine recommendations. And as a reminder, the COVID-19 doses are not officially approved until they are authorized by the CDC and standing orders are published. Related to that, the CDC uh, has recently created a landing page for COVID-19 vaccination for children 5 through 11 years of age on their website. The page links for different audiences, including parents, caregivers, healthcare providers, pharmacists, and health jurisdictions. The page contains a variety of resources, including the pediatric COVID-19 operational planning guide. That may be of less interest to parents, but we are going to put this website on the health services school website. So you go to the district main page under departments, you'll find health services and you just double click on that so that parents can go there and look up hopefully more information that will apply to them and their families. Additionally, there's going to be a town hall meeting for parents making COVID-19 vaccination uh, decisions for their children. So this town hall meeting will be held uh, from 4 o'clock to 5.45 p.m. Uh, Thursday, November 1st, I'm sorry, Thursday, November 4th, and you can watch it on Facebook or YouTube. We will also have that link so that parents could possibly um, get some more answers to their questions by watching that. And the last piece of information comes from our Emergency Operations Center for Clallam County, and they have said that the OMC will be handling the vaccination of children at their new COVID clinic. OMC acquired the old Wells Fargo Bank at Front and Race in Port Angeles and turned it into an exclusive location for COVID-related response. Um, so please go ahead and check out our health services webpage and hopefully that will give you some more information. Thank you. Sonia, thank you for that information. That is really important information for all of us to have. And on that note, Squim, it is Monday and you have a great week and we'll be back next Monday. Thank you so much. Bye bye.